All right, we live? All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Old Reader, New Reader with Amanda and Omar, who is here with me in my studio today because his house is getting worked on. And, of course, lovely Maddie, our other hey. new reader. Um, sorry we weren't on last week. Um, you may or may not know. All right, I we live. down with All right. a case right. of bronchitis and literally was hacking up a lung for like the better part of last week. So I apologize, but we are back in action this week and ready to go and talk about Ed Brubaker's Velvet. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, uh, you know, three part series, I guess. Yeah, it support. is about a female spy in the 50s, 60s, 70s that takes place in multiple I, mean, I, I guess it would mainly take place in the 70s. Like that's, that's yeah, it takes with flashbacks place. in the With 50s. the flashbacks in the 60s and then eventually in the second art in the 50s. I guess you would yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about it, like how it all well, starts off? Did you, did you all both like the way it started off with a she's the secretary? Right. Yes. Well, um, I'll tell you, this is what like, I'm saying. Yeah, the yeah. beginning of, yes, this will be her. I'm going to keep reminding myself, look at this camera, guys, and not at my, <laughs> or not at Omar. Um, so I, so I had completely like blanked when I started reading this, and I didn't remember who wrote it or anything. I just, I was like, oh, Velvet. Okay, that's what we're reading. Didn't pay attention to the front cover. As soon as I open it up, it starts out with um, a gentleman talking about Velvet, the secretary of the hidden secret. And just the way the narration was, just the way the artistry was, the coloring, I thought, I've seen this before. Why have I seen this? This narration seems familiar to me. And I was like, I looked at the cover, and I was like, oh, it's the guy who wrote Fade Out. And it's the same colorist. That makes sense. Of course, that's why I would recognize it. Um, so it starts out with this secretary. Um, her name is Velvet Templeton. And she works for this super secret squirrel organization in America called White Seven. It's a secret squirrel? Secret squirrel. <laughs> it's, a it's, wonderful. it's more secret than S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, okay. <laughs> if it's in the same universe. And the main part of the first issue is that X-14 operative um, has been murdered. He was on assignment and he was murdered and no one knows you know, who who murdered him, what would be the cause of it. They realized that someone who murdered him must have known where he was going to be, must have been inside somehow, her new inside information. And so they're trying to figure out, you know, during the first few issues, who killed X-14, which I think his name was, oh gosh, if I remember, Jeff you're, Keller. You're better with names than I am. Yeah. I, I just, I can't <laughs> hardly remember her last name, almost at Temple here. <laughs> <laughs> Templeton, yes, you're right. And I just read this like you yesterday. Um, so um, Velvet has an actual, like, she doesn't have a, a strong, she has a relationship with him, but not like a strong relationship, right? They're just close in the way that two men and women can be close as friends, right? They have, so she seems, they think, this, they seem to think he might be a double agent of some kind or something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And she wants to prove them wrong. She doesn't, she suddenly doesn't sound right to her. And so, she thinks that this other agent named Frank Lancaster somehow tipped someone off or something like that, or that's what they think, and she's trying to prove them wrong. And so she decides to go on her own secret mission. And we realize very quickly that she's not just a secretary. No, she's, she's not. she's more than I just a secretary. That. She is like the baddest ass spy yeah. that Arc 7 has. She is. And so when she goes to his apartment, Frank Lancaster is to confront him to see if he's the one who either got X-14 killed or killed him himself. She realizes he's been shot and killed. So she's staying in the middle of his apartment and a bunch of ARC-7 agents come by and they immediately think she's to blame. They start shooting at her and thus is starts off our big story arc, yep. I guess. That's the, the first entire. story arc. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this part's really cool because, you know, no one where she is, or really, I mean, very little people don't even know who she is. So they just exactly. see her as a secretary because she's worked there for so long. And all of her previous reports, for the most part, have been dealt with. And they, and they are not in the records, right? Except for her code, code name. And so her boss knows, but, no, but nobody else. And so when this happens, when this drops, they're like, whoa, whoa, shit. What? What? She's, <laughs> she's, what the hell? 
like you didn't tell us he had this girl working for you. That's ridiculous. And man, she does it in such a cool way. And she transitions from this and she's like, no, I've always got it. Maybe a little yeah. rough, but I've always got it. Here's my stealth suit and here's all this stuff. And man, she's great. Yeah, she jumps out of that four story window and you're like, oh, she's a badass. And she hasn't even tested the suit. She's like, well, I'm, I just got this. I haven't got to test it yet, but uh, here we go. I'm trying to find the page where she, she just jumps, jumps out. Right yeah, there. this is where she jumps out of the window. You can see that. And then she has this like Tom Cruise kind of flight suit on her. Uh, it, yeah, very Mission Impossible ish. Yes, Jason Bourne. You yeah. can name every kind of spy genre out there. Uh, she kind of fits the bill. I think it reminds me a lot more of like the James Bond films and things like that. It, she she's a very James Bond character mm -hmm. that starts off as you think like a Bond girl almost. She is, but Bond. she is the Bond character she's, of this book. She, so she's she's awesome. a powerful woman who who's free with her sexuality, and you know she is in charge and in control, and I love it. Because that's exactly what James Bond is, right? No, he has a he's bunch a of nice. He's a guy. nice guy. <laughs> no, she, I, you know, it's funny. Like, I don't. It's weird because she's a character that I really enjoyed, and I don't. You you mentioned empowered woman, but I just think she's just a badass character. Like, sex aside, yeah, she's just a badass she character, and it's a character I really enjoy. Yeah, kind of like in the same way that I look at like Rogue or Storm. Like they're just badass yeah. characters that happen to be women, I, and I feel well, that way like, about Velvet. But she does make the point. So later on, she talks about, and we'll talk about Lady Pauline here when we get to the second part. Who was her trainer? And she saw Lady Pauline, and she thought of this woman as she didn't just stay home and cook and clean. She won. She was doing there. She was out there doing something with her life, and that's who she wanted to be. So yeah. in a way, they. I still think it's exciting. Like. I, 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 she's a great character, and no, we don't have to mention that she's a woman. But as a female reader, like I, I mean, I'm lucky now. There's a lot of great female characters, but like in a role like this, I haven't seen one. In a role where you know she's that age too, like you know, men and a lot of the roles in like film and TV and books, they get to be older and be like, I'm this, I was a spy, and now I'm back in the game, and they get to have those roles. But you're not seeing that. For women of that age, because you see the younger women, but once you reach a certain age as a woman, and you see this in a lot of like media, you don't get to have these roles anymore. Like maybe you're the boss of the organization, but you sit behind a desk and you're like right. controlling everything, and that's it. But this action role, like this, is super awesome and refreshing for me, the female reader. You see that like in uh, in, in Hollywood, right? Like women yeah. have a hard time getting cast as they get older because yeah. there are no roles like that for women. No. Yeah, which you're. You're right. I mean, it's typically the man, the male role to come back as a badass older spy. Yeah. Whereas this is the first time, at least for me, is she's a very unique character because she, she is, is middle aged. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I, we, we got to talk about. Like, she's not young. She it starts off in the seventies, and she's already what I think is in her forties. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, she's still a badass. Like the way she's working out, and, and like she's not as agile as no. she was in her twenties or thirties, but. She's still kind of a badass. The yeah. most thing I can think of is Helen Mirren when she did like the red movies with Bruce Willis. Oh, yeah, I forgot But about like, that. even like with Impossible, I had to look it up just to double check. But even all the female sidekicks he has, they're all in their 20s, right? Like, yeah. I look at Rebecca Ferguson, it's like maybe she's over 30. She's just over 30. She's 83. So she's just born 83. So she's just over 30, maybe in her late 30s. But for the most part, we don't see a ton of women in their middle age doing this. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to be said for this role. And like I, I was telling them earlier, the one of, what is this picture right here? Now, where is it? It's right in the beginning. This picture of her, why can't I find it now? Well, there's a picture of her, this one right here. When I saw this picture of her, all I could think of is that kind of looks like Katherine Keener from 40-Year-Old Virgin and Get Out, if anyone has ever seen any of those with her in it. Um, and she would... She's a pretty awesome um, actress who I think could play the role. Maybe, uh, who knows? Yeah, I agree. It could surprise us all. <laughs> uh, maybe. I, I, um, she's got a range. I, I've had a mad crush on this uh, fictional character for a long time since I first read this book. So going back and rereading this was a nice uh, refresher. Yes. 
so we want you going on the story. Yeah, so that's the that's pretty much builds up the first arc. The second arc is the secret lives of dead men, and that is more about her past. Yes, where she is confronted by the person that, or no, she confronts the person that trained her. Yes, and we'll, I'm sorry, what was her name? Yeah, a lady Pauline. So she has so in the the next section. So basically, she's has a list of several men she thinks could have possibly the artwork while you talk, go ahead. been involved in either the killing of X-14. And there's a big part at the end of this, the first six issues, which I think is essentially the first volume. There's the flight suit. Um, she's yes. talking to an ex-KGB agent that at one time she had drugged and stolen his bags of money, I think, it's, or something. And now they're talking like they're best friends. I guess that's what happens after 20 years of being involved in spy business. <laughs> and right. he mentions something about Mockingbird being a double agent and that was her ex-husband's pseudonym mm -hmm. or um cover name and so that leads us into a little bit of her backstory yeah. how she had went to this private school and there was this amazing woman teacher lady pauline who taught her everything she needed to know about being a spy um and that woman had her own tragic uh backstory as well was so messed up let me try to find that where she and gets uh stabbed by she the, gets stabbed by the guy that she was with right yes and it didn't even seem like she cared and they that's how it seems because she these had, women she are trained that way yeah because they like they because she fought during the war lady pauline whereas velvet did a lot of undercover work and a lot of spy work after world war ii in the 1949 um so she was fighting a lot of russian yeah, so, agents things like that so she ends up killing him throwing him out the window and he cuts her throat yes and yeah that kind of stuff i love this outfit by the way yeah, so basically she thought always thought her husband was a double agent, but now we don't know if he just thought she was a double agent. They mm -hmm. both thought they attacked each other, and he ends up dying tragically. And so that's a little bit of her backstory. And meanwhile, she's trying to cross all these gentlemen off her list that she thinks could possibly be the ones who are involved in this big conspiracy that we think. One of them is the director, who she always considered a father, so she doesn't want to be him. Um, there is Gene Ballinger, I think, who's like a Paris operative, um, a senator who used to be in Arc 7, then he got out to be in politics. Um, then there's another, well, I don't think Damian Lake was in it, but Damian Lake he was is, on her list. He wasn't on her list, but. Talking about the guy with the long hair. Yeah, right? the guy with the long hair. But he, but the people on her list played an important role of getting to this gentleman named Damian Lake. And I think that's a pretty important um, part in this because basically Damien Lake is a gentleman who. He is no gentleman. He's not a gentleman. He was with Arc 7. He um, kind of went crazy, I guess. That's the story. That's the story that you're led to believe when, when she runs into him. Yes. Right? She has to, he's, being, he's being transported from a prison and she releases him because he has information that, that her husband was not a double agent. So it kind of goes on this little spree. She's trying to figure out this story um, to figure out who all these different, you know, apparently there's a lot of underpinnings going on, a lot of secret things going within the secret organization. And there's a lot of double agents and she's trying to figure out who's who. It's a and very somehow, spy book. It is very spy movie. Every, every spy movie. And, so um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about yeah. what I didn't like about the plot, but uh, no, and then that leads us to the final arc, which is the man who stole the world. Look at this beautiful Steve Epstein. And, so uh, pretty. <laughs> what is your name? Bright, Bright, Brightweiser? Bright, Bright, Elizabeth Brightweiser. Yeah, Brightweiser, the colorist. I mean, Harvey. which we'll talk about the art here in a little bit. But man, just, I could stare at that for quite a while. Anyway, uh, yeah. the man who stole the world. Yes, go ahead, Omar. So this is where she goes and infiltrates very Mission Impossible-ish. Uh, the arc seven and starts taking them out one by one, and yeah, basically like her attack plan, right? There's a lot yeah. of defending and kind of getting the answers, but this this chapter is like her really making her move. Yes, and it's really cool in the way that she does. She, she not only plays them, but she also plays the reader, because you know mm -hmm. you you kind of expect things, but you don't see what's happening behind the scenes, of course, because you. So that that part kind of did surprise me. So she's using everybody to get to who is ever whoever is behind this, and this is where what's his name Lake plays his card. Yes. With uh, what's the waitress at the end? The the girl that was trying to set her up. This girl. Uh, Rachel. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I thought that was pretty cool because she's she knew, you know, she knew who Rachel was. Like, I thought that was cool, and she found her out. Mm -hmm. And and this is one of those moments of like, you know, who's really the good guy? Who's really the bad guy? Who's gonna die? Who's gonna live? And yeah. I love that. Because it's it's a cool mix of like crime noir and spy movies. Yeah. And I think for me, you know, that's very kind of that's pretty hard to do. I don't see mm -hmm. a lot of uh, folks <coughs> doing that. No. That's what I enjoy this so much. And yes, you want to talk about Richard Nixon and Watergate? Yeah. So <laughs> there's so there's a lot of hints throughout this book, and I didn't until I reread it a second time. I didn't realize there are a lot of little pieces of. <laughs> <laughs> of um oh gosh uh newspaper articles right and they say stuff like nixon denies or nixon won't resign and things like that and you don't realize until the very end so um during the end of this she plays her major card and there's an agent cult who's been after her this whole time and he starts to believe that maybe things aren't as they seem and maybe there's people in the organization who aren't as trustworthy as he was first led to believe and that right. is and he thinks that velvet might be onto something and so they fake her death, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But yes. you don't know we that. We don't at know first. that at first. You think she actually is on a suicide mission. On a suicide mission. And it's funny because Agent Colt's like, it's weird because I'm sitting in this room with a guy who's supposed to be dead because Director Manning, we had all thought in the la at the last right. one, had died. But it turns out he's still alive pulling all the strings. Yeah, that's how very all the work. president's man, uh, Patriot Games. I, it, I, I love that part. The third part was my favorite part. It was because that's where all the action just kind of, yeah. and you realize he's working with Damian Lake. Well, and that's where all the backstories kind of yep. uh, sum up to like what it, what, what she, who she actually was, and how she is able to get out of this game eventually if she can. If she I'm, can. I'm sorry, I interrupted. No. You. So it ties into Watergate. It <laughs> yeah. ties into Nixon. <laughs> Which is crazy. I was not expecting that at I, all. I had forgot about that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so basically, X-14, or... <laughs> she takes the, or, So right at the beginning of the issue, you know, right at the beginning of this whole thing, the gentleman who... The, the uh, operative who was murdered, he was murdered because he saw another operative, Frank Lancaster, who was also in the Watergate Hotel the night the Nixon burglars were there. Right. The ones who saw all the secret stuff and, you know, everything like that. The big Watergate scandal. And so that's why he was murdered. So basically, you have this showdown of Velvet confronting Director Manning, the man she thought was her, you know, father figure, someone she could trust. Turns out he wasn't. They have this whole, very typical to me, like, you know, that whole uh, sequence of conversation where he's like, you know, we're here because the good guys aren't necessarily the people who are on our side. We have to protect right. ourselves mm -hmm. from them because they're doing all these things, putting us in unnecessary wars and all that stuff. And she's like, yep, nope, uh, that's, you know, you, you've made me kill my, uh, you know, you're the reason my husband is dead because you made me kill my husband. <laughs> like, right. All these good people right. are dead because of you. And, and then in his eyes, it's like, no, I was just doing this all because, you know, you were meant to be in the group and everything else. Yeah. And like, you're my protege, because I'm sure that he saw her as well as like a daughter, because the way that he's taken her in with all of this, right? Yeah. He's like, so he's reading in between the lines, too. Yeah. I'm sure that he was like, she doesn't need to be a secretary anymore. I need this woman. Yes. Somewhere exactly. else. <laughs> I love that, like, you know, part of him is recent, um, like, has a little bit of remorse when he finds the dead body, right? When he's at the morgue, mm -hmm. and he's mm -hmm. like, "Damn it!" So you can kind of tell, but he still has to keep his front. Uh, right. Yeah, but then everybody gets their comeuppance at the end. So, because you can't just get away with this. So both Lake and a director are having this nice little powwow mm -hmm. for one one final thing, and then of course, spoilers. Spoilers. Agent Velvet <coughs> Temple Ten. Ten. Velvet Temple Ted comes in, shoots him, and then has a nice little speech yep. with the director. And he's like, How did you pull it off? And she kind of tells him how she did it. Yeah, because basically Colt helped her out. Yeah. Because Cause you never know. It's really cool the way that it's written. Because just like most spy novels, you never know who's on whose side. Yeah. And it's a very non linear, like the 
the way the storytelling is, it's kind of non-linear. So it's not like a, you know, there's a lot of flashbacks in it, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff happening concurrently or ahead of time. And so, so that, that makes it a little bit, you know, that helps the mystery, right? Keeps the mystery around when you don't have a linear storytelling like that. Yeah, and it, you're right. That actually, that's a good point. That yeah. does help out. Um, but at the end, you know, he he is begging for his life. He's like, you know, <laughs> and, but he's, he's really suave about it. Yeah. He's begging for his life, but he's like, you know, I'm the only one that can clear your name, right? Yeah. Like, you can't get out of this without me. You're, you're nothing. And she's like, you think I give a damn about my name? And... <laughs> Man. She knows how to disappear, but he's this I'm dead, right? Sir, I'm already <laughs> pulls the trigger. She don't need no damn man. That's the message I got. <laughs> and of course, what is a good spy movie with like with all that hard work that you just did without a beach scene at the very end? Oh, it was awesome. When she's on vacation. Best way to end, yeah. A very good way to end this. Man. So um, let's talk about the art first. Uh, so this is the same team that gave us Winter Soldier. Uh, Winter Soldier was a storyline in Ed Brubaker's run on Captain America. He teamed up with Steve, Steve Epting. Steve Epting is an artist. He graduated from the, um, the Joe Kubert Art School. So he has a very Joe Kubert, Andy Kubert, uh, Ron Garney kind of art style. It's very sketchy, but when that was in the 90s when he came back and started doing more marvel things in the early aughts and, and mid 2000s like his art style kind of changed he cleaned it up a lot and he made his characters look a lot realistic like this so it's crazy when i came back and read winter soldier even this compared to winter soldier looks a lot different now that's his artwork like the artwork is beautiful it's it's wonderful um there are some pages in the back here the extras of his art without uh, the colors, what it looks like. Let me show you a little bit. This is why, by the way, this is available in three trade paper bags. It's digitally available, but the way that I recommend it, and I'll put the description in the description the link is the hardcover. I mean, just look at that, that's gorgeous. Now, saying that, that colorist really could have fucked up his art. Yeah. It really could have made or break his art. And I think she did oh. such an amazing Again. job of making it just come to life. That, Absolutely. That, yes. Good Lord, everything looks so real. And she added so much atmosphere to all these fucking mm -hmm. pages. Oh my God. It's very, like I keep thinking whatever time I was reading it, it's so cinematic to me. Yes. Like yes, just the way the art and the colors are. You, you I'm showing. It's like just the cities so, so The way real. she chooses to shadow certain things and light certain things, I think is fantastic. And even the way he does his artwork, like the action sequences, to me, it just feels like you could be in those action sequences and being in those scenes, which I think is a testament to their ability, for sure. Um. Oh my God, yes, you are absolutely right. It, and they're clean too, like the action sequences are clean, so they're yes. easy to follow. Yes. And not that spy movies have amazing choreographed fighting sequences, but it's so believable when you have an artist like this do it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I, I can't say enough. I know, you know, of course it's Brubaker. Of course we, we're going to love it. But I don't think, you know, it would have been the same had, I hate to say this, but like Phillips been on it. And I love the team of Br Brubaker and Phillips. Yeah. I don't think I would have been crushing on her as hard as I am if uh, Phillips had done this, Sean Phillips, instead of Steve Epting. So. She is so sexy. Yeah. And so real. But so real. It's not yeah. over, overly sexy. She's just a real character. So this is the amount of detail that goes into it's my Catherine Keener. Incredible. Like that 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 is just amazing. Like it's oh it's gorgeous. It looks so real. Yeah. Well, because you can even Catherine see Keener. like yes. you know, in her face, just the real well, she's aged, Yeah, exactly. Right? No, she's but not, I think that's perfect. Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. they're not trying to make her what a badass. I wish I was this badass. She is. She, and I like, she looks she does, so good in black spandex. She does make a joke in this. I don't remember where which issue it was, where she gets shot in the side, and then she proceeds to beat the guy up, and he goes like, ow, and she's like, oh, please, stop being a baby. Try getting shot in the side. And I oh, just yeah. laughed. <laughs> we, we live this, I love this workout scene. I love that. Oh. Yeah. So cool. Y'all get that like naked Wolverine workout scenes all the fucking time in comic books. 
So this was really nice. Another thing that I liked about this that we didn't talk about is she didn't like most of the time when you when I read comic books or watch movies about badass women. Usually their counterparts are badass women too, mm-hmm. like like uh, somebody like an assassin with that fights with knives or hammers or whatever. But it happens to also be a woman. Yeah, it's like you hardly ever see a woman go up against a bunch of guys. Yeah, agree. Psych- psychologically and physically, and I think this is why this stands out so much to me, at least. Yeah, like, as far as I have read or seen. It didn't play to any of those tropes of like having a badass woman, like "oh, you took my man" or "you killed my baby," whatever. <laughs> it, it, it's so awesome. Uh, so, was there anything else you all wanted to talk about before we give it a final score? Anything else? Um, that you- not much. Just, really just um, I was just. I mean, it's just nice to read a character like that. Really, I mean, that's my biggest thing. Like, I, I like the story. Um, yeah. I like the ambiance, like the atmosphere, but the thing that really sold this for me and drove it home was Velvet Templeton. You know, yeah. really, anything could have happened around her. I still would have been like, yep, 10 out of 10, she's there. So I'm, I'm happy because she was just so cool the whole time. Like, what an interesting, awesome character she is. And the way that, you know, how she was in action scenes and how, you know, forward thinking she was in different situations. But still not perfect and still learning as, you know, all of these things happen around her. Like, you know, she wasn't all powerful. You know, she was still in, imperfect. I think that was really important. And man, she's so cool. She's so cool. Like it. Yeah. But, like I said, I wish I was that cool. She even has a cool name. That's not fair to be that cool. Right? And a cool name. No, but Templeton. Not that Omar Valle isn't that cool. And but, wasn't you know. her, her code name was Valentine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's even better. I mean, yeah. Well, that's kind of a. Very. Like, it kind of throws you off, right? Miss Valentine's yeah. always been like a, uh, one of those Bond girl kind of characters. Exactly. Um, those are some very good points, Maddie. Okay. So, ladies, yes. what would you give this? Out of 10. I have to go back because I can't remember what you all gave Fade Out. I'm curious. I don't remember what I, I gave Fade Out either. We'll have to go watch our video again to find out. I think we give it top uh, scores. Were we giving right. scores back then? Yeah, we did. Okay. I think I would give this a 9 out of 10. Because I solidly enjoyed it. It was a great film. It was a great... Uh, it may be like the spy. I'm not a big spy genre fan. So this made me enjoy it immensely. I usually end up losing interest in the movies halfway through. So I give this a 9 out of 10 because it kept my interest in a genre I normally don't enjoy. Yep, fair yeah. enough. What about you, Matt? Um, I give the character Velvet Templeton a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I give the book like a 7.5. And I only say that because I think that could be me. And when I rate mm-hmm. things, I rate it by how I feel right now. I feel like if I read it again, I might feel differently. Um, and I don't know if that's me. I'm just being honest with you guys. Sometimes I read too fast and it can be hard for me to like catch on to everything. Um, but I still think it's a very solid book. I thought it was really good. Art's beautiful. The story was really interesting. Um, I wish I was more surprised by how things turned out. I think maybe something was lost on me to where I didn't. And that was the purpose of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still really enjoyed it. I, I can see that. Even rereading it, uh, I was reminded that a lot of it felt stereotypical in, you know, like spy movies and things like that. But with that Blue Baker twist that added those little elements that kind of made me forget, oh, that's right. This isn't what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. and, and made me almost want to be like, oh, I kind of wish he had died. That would have been different. But I kind of knew where it was going. It was a little bit predictable. But uh, eight, eight, yeah, solid eight for me out of 10. I really enjoyed this story. Um, not my favorite Rue Baker, but up there as one of the best. For sure. What's your favorite Rue Baker? Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's so hard. Like, I, I, Of course, the correct answer is Gotham Central. But nothing beats Gotham Central, but that's kind of cheating because he was co-writing that. Well, he was writing the day shift and Greg Rucka was writing the night shift. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's about the, we should read that one day. It's about the police officers in Gotham, but it has oh, cool. very little to do with, I wish they had taken that idea and made Gotham out of it. Like, instead, instead of what of they Gotham. did. <laughs> um, <laughs> the birth of Bruce Wayne. <laughs> but I like Sleeper. I like love Criminal. Oh man, this is tough. There's so many, because I, I, 
it, he's one of those writers that I don't think I've ever been disappointed in. Same uh, even with his um, his superhero stuff, like yeah. Uncanny X Men. His Uncanny X Men run <laughs> might be my least favorite thing he's that, that he's written, but that's because Uncanny X Men yeah. for me is up here, and it's really difficult to write those characters. Um, it's interesting because the the first two Brubakers you've had us read have not been superhero. Well, he he wasn't yeah. really known for his superhero stuff until like, later. Um, yeah, like he 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 did some stuff for DC and then uh, Image. He he know he is mainly known for his creator own stuff. That's, That's and awesome. then they let him because he's really good at Spawn. Uh, yeah, clearly, right? he's very good at it. So of course, <laughs> they got Marvel with Spawn. They're like, hey, you want to write Captain America? He's like, fuck yeah! If I get to bring yeah. Bucky back, that's perfect. Yeah, it is really and perfect. And that's where we got Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah. It was all his baby. So, mm. um, what's Omar's favorite Bendis? Bendis. <laughs> Miles, Miles, Miles Morales, Morales, I think, is the only. <laughs> uh, Miles Morales. His Daredevil run was pretty solid. I actually, you know, we should read his Daredevil run sometime because Remember. I'm curious what it would read like for me the second time around. Because the first time I read it, I was not in love with it like most people. Yeah, uh, but I'm curious if I reread it, you know how it how it stands. People still hold that as one of the best things he's ever written. That is Ultimate Spider-Man, and Ultimate Spider-Man for me, I just yeah, the Ultimate Universe to me was just nah. <laughs> Been there, done that for me, and I don't I don't need uh, I don't need modernization for my characters for me to enjoy it. Even though I did like Miles, but Miles is a different story. Yes, Miles is so. a brand new character that started off in the Ultimate Universe. Um. Is Brew Baker's X Men Deadly Genesis not well received? I think most people really like Deadly Genesis because you're introducing the idea that there's a third Summers brother, and anybody that has read X Men for the long for the longest time like knows that that's been thrown around since the days of Claremont. I mean, when Claremont was writing it, we were hinted that Gambit was the third Summers brother, and then when he left, Fabian says I hinted that there was this character named Adam X. He was going to be the third Summers brother. And what happens is those characters end, or I'm sorry, those writers end up leaving, and their stories go with them. So when Ed Brubaker came on, they were like, "Hey, we need a third Summers brother, so let's retcon some stuff." I did not like Deadly Genesis because it's one of those stories that retcons Giant Size X Men One, which I hold up as one of the holy grails. But um, I, you know, with what he did, and honestly, we wouldn't have War of the Kings if it wasn't for Vulcan. So fuck yeah. I'm glad that they introduced that character. <laughs> yes, Adam X was so extreme. That was his fucking name. His name was extreme. <laughs> That's 90s, man. All he needed was a damn skateboard like my boy Night Thrasher. That does sound very 90s. Yes, Brubaker. See, I, see, I enjoyed Brubaker's uh, Daredevil. Because Daredevil. he took, he wrote Daredevil right after. Bendis left it on like, something happens at the end of Bendis' run that you're like, shit, what's going to happen now? And then when Brubaker leaves, something happens at the end of his run, you're like, shit, what's going to happen now? And the next writer has to come in and either fix it or run with it. Unfortunately, uh, who was it that wrote Shadowland? Um, what is his name? Whoever, I, can, I cannot remember the writer right now, but whoever came on and wrote Shadowland just didn't do that well. Because yeah, he's after Brubaker. Damn, I'll remember his name here at the end of the show after we sign off. So now, has Ed Brubaker? He hasn't written any more of this, right? Velvet? No, no. no. This is a one thing. This is a. Uh, this is probably the only thing. The only thing that he's come back to do, which I'm glad he did, was Criminal, because Criminal is up there for me. It's yeah. one of the best Brubaker books ever. And he left. Uh, what was his other book that he did? Incognito. That's not finished yet. He said one day him and Phillips would go back and do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, he really does. He is a hell of a writer. Yeah. I can't wait to you all read Dawson Central because that's that's one of my favorites. And he wrote this Wildstorm character uh, that started off in the Wildstorm yeah. universe and Image with Wildcats. And it's, just, it's this awesome omnibus called Sleeper. But you don't really need to read all that stuff mm -hmm. to understand Sleeper. It's about a secret agent, a sleeper agent uh, that people kind of that knew that he was a sleeper kind of got killed off in the same sense like in the departed the way that that's done but it's so damn good uh, that's a good one too um okay so there you have it seven and a half eight nine nine out of ten velvet go and purchase it
worth it. Seriously, great read. Yeah, that's a beautiful heart. All right, ladies, y'all had your uh, your yearly dosage of a uh, woman hero. So there you go. No, we agreed on that, right? No, we did not. Next month. Next month. Next month's my birthday month. What are we talking about? So Just next ladies. month. Next mm -hmm. month, you're going to be, since it's Women's History Month. And Omar's birthday month. And Omar's birthday month. Is, is for one week, we'll month. do something for Omar, but we will be doing some focus stuff on some either women's heroes, female heroes, female creators, and things like that. We've been over this. Some There's of those, no... and, and what's cool, some of those, Omar will be the new reader. So. Yeah. We'll be right? And I will be the old reader. This yes. is what we call old readers, new readers. Yeah. Andy Diggle, thank you very much. That's enough women for this year. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Iron Carmel. That's Iron right. Carmel, I can't believe you. I can't believe you either. Yeah, bless. Listen, you all we're going to beat Red Sonia, and we're all going to deal with it together. The end. Yes. Oh, Sorry. So excited. Yeah. Because of Maddie, I read Red Sonia, and now I cannot get enough of her. So. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna. I've never read Gail Simone's run on Red Sonia, so oh, yeah, we'll have so some, we'll have some things lined up for next month. Yes, um, but what about next week? Next week is Fire our Blue. our celebration of Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day is this Thursday. Yeah. So next week we're we we took a poll you know, on the on the um, oh my God X Women oh yeah Manara's artwork dude they're gonna hate it. Um, Whoa, not Kelly Sue DeConnick? Why not Joe Chip? <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of with Joe on that one, but I'll. I'll, I'll we, I've we're, actually we're, read some Kelly. We can. We can talk about yeah. it. Um. Right. What the hell was I saying? Oh. Oh, your poll. <laughs> we took a poll on the YouTube page, on this page, <laughs> and it was decided for us that Spider-Man Blue is going to be the our oh, Valentine's so excited Day. excited to read Spider-Man finally. Which oh. is crazy because this is the third time we've read a damn Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale book. And what we're going we to run out of good ones, <laughs> guys. Well. We're going to end up reading Red Hulk. And y'all are going to be like, what happened to fucking Jeff Loeb? He used to be so good. I'm going to be like, see, I told you we should have pumped our brakes. But yes, Spider-Man Blue, one of my favorite stories. Uh, very sad. Everybody's going to be in tears. So join us as we cry next yes. Tuesday at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and talk about love. Um, let's see. There was something else uh, that I wanted to talk about really quick um, because that's on the nineteenth, by the way. Yes. On the twenty-sixth, this is also African uh, African American or African. Black History Month. This yeah. is Black History Month. Mm -hmm. we're talking? Okay. Black History Month. <laughs> I don't even celebrate Latino month. I have a birthday month and that's all I celebrate. Anyway. <laughs> so what I wanted to do is I don't there there we could have done it both ways. We could do we could have done a, a, a hero like Black Panther or Black Lightning and read one of those books. But instead I think one of my favorite writers that has passed away sadly was uh, Dwayne McDuffie. Now, he was known because he created this thing called the Milestone Universe. He was one of the big guys that did that. It was an African-American. It was black superheroes that were kind of sharing the universe with the DC characters at a crossover event. And then eventually it kind of went away. He was, uh, he was also one of the head writers for t uh, a lot of the DC animated shows. Like, you know, wrote some of the best episodes of Justice League uh, Limited. And his last work before he passed away was the script to the Justice League uh, Tower of Babel story, which, what was it called? Doom. Justice League Doom. Mm -hmm. Randall Savage at a Raj. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, I think I'd like to read the uh, Injustice League storyline. I would too. Okay. And I would like we haven't done any Justice League stuff. We've done Avengers. Yeah. And to me, it is at least in my top three favorite Justice League books of all time. And he, he's one of those writers that I really miss. Also happened to be black. So I figured we'd celebrate it that way. Instead of having a character like Black Panther or Black Lightning. Uh, because I think with those. I love Black Lightning. <laughs> you do love Black Lightning. I know, but, but those runs like aren't. I well, know. I want to check out the new one. There's a new. I, I know that. I don't know how much he's gotten his due. But the new one looks like it's pretty good. Yeah. So, oh, Omar, that's what I see on a daily basis. She does. 
Yeah, you was reading too late in the chat there. <laughs> Black Canary. I can get down with that. Wait. No, we can't. Uh, Maddie and Amanda won't let me. Got that Miss Marvel DM on this in high school. Good, man. It did. It sold out in like two hours, which is crazy because Dang I thought that. the direct market covers were not selling out anymore. I got the Amanda Connor cover because it's. I'm fine with that. It so wasn't. Quick. <laughs> so quick. Black Adam. Guys, those guys are just happen to have the word black in them. <laughs> that does again. <laughs> We're reading Justice League. Injustice League. Injustice League. League. Jane McDuffie. Everybody remember that for what day was that? The 26th. The 26th. This is what happens when Omar tries to be politically correct. It goes out the fucking window. Black is night. Damn it, Ray. Stop it. Stop it, chat. <laughs> the chats go crazy. So, yes, now. next month is, what is it again? Omar's birthday month. Omar's That's bi- right. Women's and apparently, it also happens to be this women's, what is it? Women's History Month. Women's History Month. Y'all get a whole month, huh? Yep. All right. Uh, good. Good for you all. So we'll re- be reading some Gail Simone. We'll be reading some Batgirl and Wonder Woman. I think we should read Supergirl being Girl. Super by Mari Tamaki. That is a great book, and I'm it's a big so fan great. of it. Um, so if, you, if the chat has any suggestions for... Omar's birthday month, or also known as Women's History Month. Please let us know in the <laughs> comments down below. Um, and if you're not live, join us in the, or you can write it on the comments. Comments down below as well. Men have all year, Omar. Be less bitter. Yeah, I'm exactly. only bitter because I'm sharing it in my birthday month. Then this. Half the population in Omar, like, you get a whole month. I think my wife hates it. <laughs> Ross Shark. That's going to hunt me. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Raymond, that's such a great book. Actually, that would be a really good way to kick it off with Greg Rucker's original run on Wonder Woman. That would be nice. People read I'm always down for that. And yeah. I think it's one of those runs that oh, you will okay. love so much yeah. you won't be able to put it down. Or at least I think you won't be able to put it down. So it's just a good portrayal of her, too, honestly. I mean, it's David, just. I realize there's more birthdays out there than just mine. Yeah. But mine's extra special. And mine's in December. I got to share it with hey, Christmas. You got to share it with Christ. Uh, he had first dibs. <laughs> That's a good one, Ray. I think Ray might, might have just <laughs> kind of sold us on our first read that month. Uh, FF by Fraction has Ant Man Medusa. Since everyone talks about Hickman's run. Yeah. yeah, which is it, what I read. <sighs> that, actually, I like the FF. Um, Fractions FF. I didn't like his Fantastic Four, though, with Bagley. Gil Thompson, maybe. <sighs> Man, we need to start getting some damn Sandman up in this. Tokyo I know, Ghost. I Gil Thompson will be at C2E2, too. It might also be worth reading some things by writers Ooh. that will be at C2E2, like Amy Chu and yeah. Jill Thompson. And... Um, Gonna yeah, she's supposed yeah. to be there. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, also, the three of us are also going to C2E2 at the end of the month yeah. March, to do some press stuff. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be phenomenal. We're going to hopefully meet some. We already got an interview with Chris Claremont lined up. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But That's putting a lot of pressure on it. Okay. Maybe my best friend now, so we'll make it happen. Is I got to stalk his room the night before, and I have to pretend to be Not the cleaning creepy. crew. That's, yeah. And I could what I can pull it off. Is that what you're gonna say? You racist? Okay. Oh my god! Why did this? Hopefully. So, anyway. Uh, yes, we we may we may have some interviews yeah. lined up. So yeah. Hopefully it'll work out. So stay tuned for that. And. Also good news, our panel show is coming back at the end of this month. Yeah. So you'll be seeing that again every Thursday. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. We got a new opening. A new logo. Apparently these ladies are included in the opening because it's women's history. (laughs) Now it's a very even panel. (laughs) Less of me and more of them is always a good thing. I agree. God. (laughs) 
the trade cover of Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, okay, so yes, Ray, you talk us into it. We'll uh, start with Wonder Woman. That we will good. start with Wonder Woman next month, and then yeah. if anybody else has suggestions, um, I was thinking I some Gail Simone stuff. Um, yeah, I would love for to read Secret Six or Bird, her Bird, yes, I would her love Birds to read of Prey. Birds of Prey. Is, oh, yeah. by Gail Simone. That's what we're reading. Yes, we're very excited. Oh, yeah. Red Sonia, is she like a Conan? Yes. Oh Red my Sonia. God! You know, you know. Don't talk about my woman that way, okay? She's a Conan girlfriend. <laughs> She's not a Conan girl. She's her own person. I'm breaking that. the same people anymore. <laughs> that is breaking the internet. <laughs> She's like the Betty and Veronica of Conan, right? Oh my okay. god. You know, interesting Dude, enough, though. You had brought up. When, What's that? What? We should read some of like the newer uh, Marvel lady stuff, like um, Unstoppable. Wasp. 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 Uh, who, Unstoppable Wasp is Jeremy. Is that Jeremy Whitley? Because he's going to be at C2E2 too. Yeah, he is. He's, yeah, he's written some Unstoppable Wasp. Which is fantastic. Yeah, so, you, yeah. Know, you, said, you had said it was awesome and that's one of the things I wanted to read. And then I saw that he was going to be there. I was like, ooh, look, he's going to be there. More, more reason for me to read this now. Okay, okay, guys. It's only one month and I get a week to pick one book. <laughs> That'll be uh, good for your birthday, bud. Well, I'm birthday. just seeing the recommendations of like Squirrel Girl. Oh, uh, Lazarus would be great. Uh, I still want to read Lazarus. I'd ask for that for Christmas. I didn't get the it. The problem with um, Lazarus was that that's all for your birthday, month. Uh, the uh, problem with Lazarus is that it's not over. The third hardcover comes out, I think, um, the last week of summer. Uh, so Mister, it's one of the books that as soon as the third book comes out, I think we should do is uh, Saga. Yeah, so, I love we it. have. Any Brian K. Vaughn. No. And I think it's time we do. If only this show was daily and we could read, read Pride. We should real just quit quick. our jobs. That's right. We're going to start a Patreon. We're going to quit our jobs and just read. Yeah. So if you want to so support us, so that we could do this full Omar's time. birthday fund at Gmail. <laughs> um, Mr. Awesome recommended Dr. Afra, which I haven't read. I'm not a big into Star Wars, but I've seen the cover. And, oh, yeah. and the writer will be at C2E2 also, the writer of Dr. Afra. I like that yeah. book a lot. That's a good um, book. And then maybe if, if it's if it's something that a non Star Wars fan could get into, I'd be I'd be willing to try. Yeah, Black definitely. Widow by Wade was good too. All these awesome recommendations. Okay, someone so, snap a picture of all this. <laughs> it's not like we can't go back and watch yeah, our we own show. <laughs> We're not that self conceited. All right, so uh, Gotham City Sirens, Birds of Prey. I'm the bus. Oh, on the bus. It's going to be a hard month. If only Women's History Month was longer than a month. Well, it's a good thing it happens every year, and this show's not going anywhere. <laughs> we so. already had our one time a year thing. You ladies are so greedy. All right. Think about non Star Wars fans can get into. Yeah, I think so too. I think Dr. Offer is a good choice. So, okay. Mm -hmm. But we're kicking it off with Wonder Woman by Greg Rucka. Thank you, Ray, for suggesting that, and everybody else that did suggest that too, because there were other people in the comments that have been yes. wanting us to read that for a while. Um, that's my favorite Wonder Woman run, so I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> it's like, well, there's other runs. There's Gail Simone's run. There's William Messi Loeb's run. George Perez's run. Phil Jimenez's run just came out in an omnibus format. Not one of my so favorites, but I mean, there's always things we can read that you all may enjoy, and I just didn't dig. I've got some recommendations. That's a good idea, yeah. Oh, Wonder Woman Conan crossover is pretty good. Hmm. Is that Gail as well? Yeah, actually, I think so. Let me see. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's it's scale too. Thank you, Mr. Awesome. William Messner Loeb's is underrated and has a horrible story because the guy is fucking homeless now. Not only did he lose an arm, but I can't remember if he lost that at the time he was writing comic books. I mean, he created Artemis, and then he did, you know, the run on Thor, and his Flash run was awesome. He's a very <laughs> underrated writer. <laughs> no. <laughs> He said, after this month, you can only read all dudes all the time. All dudes all the time? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is it no, more, not is it the more of a, is it Jeff Johns off from that thing? Uh, no. No. This is like pre-New 52 Aquaman, pre-Infinite Crisis Aquaman. Um, wait, what did you just say? I was saying, if we, can more, if we can read more like that, you know, those men, I'm good with it. Quit lying. <laughs> Sexualizing men. Oh, not my fair. guys, how dare I? 
I say that after I show pictures of this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, she's realistic looking, unlike those. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you. We're going to read more dudes, we'll read some great then. Because that I get behind 100%. <laughs> I'm We're good with that. Of- I have a man crush on Dick, so mm-hmm. that came out the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he- that's right, because his name is Dick Grayson, not fucking Rick Nelson, or whatever the <laughs> hell. Sorry, Rick, not you. Uh, the other Rick Grayson, or whatever the hell. Tom King wants to call him. Oh, gee, oh man, they're so good. <laughs> By G will, but if we do, okay. So these are some great ideas. Yes. Um, that I'll probably just uh, throw to the side, and we're gonna read some manly comic books. <laughs> <laughs> like Wonder Woman, instead of reading Wonder Woman, we're gonna with- read more like Image Comics. Let me show you guys. What's the that. manliest thing we could read right after Women's Fucking History Month? Berserk. <laughs> yeah, that would be awful. No, was the- oh my god, I want you to I read Berserk <laughs> like all thirty pages of Berserk. I could barely watch the end. That, of that is the manliest anime. man in any comic book format. Oh, but those scenes. That's right, because that's what kind of dude you need. You can't. Red Sonia couldn't make it in that world. Let's not say that. <laughs> Maddie knows I'm just playing. Uh, Rush Shark is pretty. God damn it. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut from now on. All right. So, unless anyone has anything else to add, we are going to call it a night. Yeah. Who wants to sign us off? I usually look at the screen. Who wants to sign us off? Maddie, you want to sign us off? I can, but I can't say our catchphrase that well. So, I'll do the rest. You start off at it. Okay. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as usual, so happy to have you here every week. Um, please keep an eye out for the end of the month when our panel show comes back. Um, and as usual, please like and subscribe. And if you could share this with your friends, you know, we would love that. So thank you so much. Yep, and don't forget to follow us on our social media channels at, at near Mitt Con. Oops, I cut you off, sorry. Yeah, at, at near Mitt Con. And remember, guys, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. Have a great night. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.